Never say never, the world can take a thousand turns, quoted Joaquin Guzman Loera, um, the world's most um, wanted drug lord. Um, just in case you don't know who he is, um, I will be informing you guys on who this drug lord is. And um, I thought it was uh, it would be interesting if I talked about this topic because um, all my family is from Sinaloa and it's where he was born and raised and it's near, it's near where I stay at and where my family stays at. And um, some people ask me when I go on vacation if I don't, if I'm not scared to go because it's very dangerous and it's very violent there. Um, there's a lot of violence and um, even though he has committed a lot of crimes, some people don't um, see him for the other actions he has done, like what he does for his people that not even the own government is able to do for them. Um, first, I will talk about his childhood and early age. Then I will talk about his, um, how he made his way up to becoming the most wanted drug lord. And lastly, I will talk about um, his arrests and escapes. First off, we all know that um, for some, life in Mexico isn't easy. And for Joaquin Guzman Loera, um, he's just one of the many people who has tried to become someone in life. And unfortunately, he did become successful, but not in the correct way. Um, as reported by the biography.com by Ian Aldrich, Joaquin Guzman Loera um, was either born December 25th, 1954, or April 4th, 1957. They don't know which, which date was his actual birthday. Um, he was born in La Tuna, Valleraguato, Sinaloa. And as a, as a child, he sold um, oranges and was often beat by his father. And he dropped out in the third grade. Um, he dropped out of school when he was in the third grade. Um, since there's not a lot of work in the ranchos, um, him, and, along with his other brothers, helped his father um, sell marijuana. And his father often came home um, with no money um, because he would spend it on women and liquor. And um, so he soon grew tired of that situation of his father coming back home with no money. And um, he started cultivating his own marijuana along with his four other cousins at the age of 15. Um, he started supporting his own family and um, he started supporting his own family, and in his teenage years, he got kicked out by his father from his house, and so he was forced to live with his grandfather. Um, in his 20s, he um, he wanted to expand, so he left Padirahuato with the help of an uncle who was already involved in, uh, in drug trafficking. And um, he then um, got the name, the nickname, um, El Chapo, for his height, five feet, six inches. And, Throughout his life, he has married three times and has had nine children. Now that I have talked about his early years, I will now talk about how he made his way up to becoming the most wanted drug lord. He started working for the Guadalajara cartel, and um, he soon started rising in ranks, and he, um, but soon that cartel separated because the main, the main drug lord got arrested. When the drug lord got arrested, he took over some of the territories and um, he became the main, the main leader of the Sinaloa cartel. Um, by 1990, he was wanted by the DEA and the FBI because it was said that he was the most powerful and dangerous drug trafficker. He ran the biggest drug oper operation, um, trafficking drugs in up to five continents, and um, he sold marijuana, cocaine, meth, and heroin, and he was um, a successful drug lord because um, the, the methods that he used to transport his drugs. He um, used fire extinguishers to hide cocaine in them to transport them and he um, also in cans that were labeled chili peppers. Um, he had tunnels um, that would cross the Mexican to the U.S. border and they had AC built in them and that's how he would transport his, um, his drugs. Um, I recently heard on the news that some people treated him as a hero because um, not only did he help them financially, but um, he also helped build schools and places where education wasn't, um, um, they couldn't access education, like uh, schools were too far or um, families were too poor. He pumped money into the economy, taking care of infrastructure and helping the, the poor according to the thoughtcatalog.com. Now that I've talked about his um, his early years, I will now. I mean, now that I've talked about how he raised up to um, being the most wanted drug lord, I will now talk about his arrests and escapes. 
According to Ian Aldrich from thebiography.com, his first arrest was in 1933. And then um, in the book, Joaquin and Chapo Guzman, Andres Lopez stated that um, he had, um, he was able to bribe the, pr the prison guards and um, he was still able to run his, his business around um, while still being in prison. And um, <coughs> he was, he escaped with the help of a laundry cart. In February 2014, he was arrested um, in a hotel near the near the beach in Mazatlán, Sinaloa. He was then he then escaped in July 2015 um, through his bath and um, through a tunnel that led to a house that was a mile that was a mile away. Um, Times Magazine recently said there was an in a secret interview with Sean Penn and Mexican actress Kate Del Castillo, and that it led that the connection they had led to his arrest. Now that you have a better understanding and background, I will now bring things to a close. First, I've talked about his early years, then I talked about how he became the drug's most wanted drug lord, and then uh, I talked about, um, about his arrest and escapes. He is now in the same prison from where he last escaped, and he faces the possibility of being extradited to the U.S., as mentioned in Times Magazine.